profiting from the JobKeeper subsidy. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee, let's have a look at this ABC article. So dozens of companies report large boost in profits after receiving the JobKeeper subsidy. Okay, now there's, there's going to be a lot of jealousy play here. How dare these companies make a profit or make big profits when they're getting JobKeeper? JobKeeper was a terrible proposal that was just thrown out at the last minute to keep people connected to their businesses because there'll be a lot of businesses out there that haven't posted a big profit. There's a lot of people that don't need the JobKeeper that are getting it. My neighbor got it. I don't blame people for taking advantage of it if the government is stupid enough to hand out money. There are some businesses that are perfectly viable but have been completely decimated by the government, so the government implements this to keep them going, to keep that relationship there. They don't want these people to turn into long-term unemployed, particularly the older you get. So, come on. There are going to be a lot of people that just should have and probably would have fired them because there's no loyalty. Don't be so naive to think, I, I'm, I'm watching these YouTubers that are talking about all this corporate cringe, which I tend to have avoided. I didn't think it was real. Like people talking about their work family or their work wife or their work husband and believing that your employer cares about you. Sure, there are some good employers. Sure, some small businesses will go out of their way. But when push comes to shove, you got to take care of yourself with being a worker. The best bet is to ensure that you have skills that are transferable, that you've got skill security, that you're capable, that you're in demand, not just depending on others. But is that really where Australia is heading? You know. So let's look at this because uh, what do you expect? The people are not going to expect this to happen. Come on. Does some, you know, are there idiots out there that actually don't expect businesses to make money? I, I, I see that some of the lefties, they, they get angry whenever a business dares to make money. How dare that business make a profit and not pay everything to the workers that have not taken any risk? More than 30 companies recorded higher profits in the last six months of 2020 after receiving hundreds of millions of dollars in the JobKeeper subsidies. Then in the last six months of 2019, yeah, there are going to be some businesses that did really well out of this. We're in a K-shaped economy, guys. You know, there's some people who have invested in property that have gotten JobKeeper that have done really well because their property's gone up. Okay, there's others. It's no different. JobKeeper payments accounted for approximately 20% of their underlying earnings on average. On analysis of the financial reports of 299 companies on the ASX 300. Corporate Governance Advisory Group, Ownership Matters, okay, I bet you they're biased, looked at the gov uh, government subsidies received by the 300 largest entities listed on the ASX during the calendar year 2020. It wanted to know how companies were accounting for the wage subsidies in their financial reports. Yeah, uh, guys, this is what happens in an interventionist economy. Governments are going to hand out welfare to everyone. Yeah, they're going to force money out of your hands. They're going to sneakily take it away from you with all these levies and taxes everywhere. They're going to inflate it out of your out of your savings. And then they're going to give it back to you. And people are going to be happy. And they're going to keep voting for the same thing. It found 95 of 299 ASX 300 listed entities had now reported receiving government subsidies in 2020 worth a combined $3.8 billion, with JobKeeper payments received by 75 of those companies accounting for 2.5 billion more than 60 percent of the 3.8 billion okay yep i mean guys this is surprising to anyone the six largest job keeper recipients were qantas crown resorts flight center star entertainment group eagers automotive and g8 education they accounted for roughly 63 percent of all job keeper payments going to listed companies so profits improve significantly for some companies receiving JobKeeper. Well, their costs go down, particularly if they're not running. However, Ownership Matters was particularly interested in the financial health of companies receiving JobKeeper payments. It compared their financial position in the last six months of 2020 as recorded in their financial reports to the last six months of 2019. It found 34% or sorry, it found 34 entities reported an increase in their underlying earnings from pre-pandemic levels after receiving a total of 284 million in JobKeeper subsidies. 
It said that $294 million was worth roughly 20% of all JobKeeper payments received by ASX 300 entities in the final six months of 2020. JobKeeper was clearly more material to some companies than others, Ownership Matters told its clients. As these entities were significant beneficiaries of government subsidies, well, they're probably also payers of significant tax. We all are. Don't forget that, everyone. Oh, and we'll be paying for this in the future. Future tax owners. No, sorry, sorry. Um, economic units. Investors should closely scrutinize the sustainability of earnings in future periods as government assistance is being wound back. It sent its research note to its client on Wednesday evening after the stock market closed. So the JobKeeper program lacks transparency. Ownership Matters said the $2.5 billion worth of JobKeeper subsidies received by entities on the ASX 300 in 2020 only accounts for 3% of the entire JobKeeper program. And the rest of the program, a whopping $83 billion and counting, lacks basic transparency. Yeah, I bet you a lot of small businesses got it and didn't even need it. But can you blame them if the government is going to give out the money and someone over there is going to get an unfair competitive advantage because they're taking advantage of this system and you're not? What I'm worried is that we're going to hear about businesses that kick the can down the road with JobKeeper keeping going, incurring more and more costs, then went under and will take other businesses with them. And then we'll hear the sob stories of little Susie didn't get her, her um, what is it, superannuation payments or long service leave even though she got JobKeeper for six years. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but you know what I mean. ASX companies represent the only data through which to analyze the impact on corporate profits made by JobKeeper. Uh, see that, why they only care about... <laughs> Guys, this is to keep people off welfare. Should we have just put them all on welfare? Maybe it would have given a whole lot of people a taste of that socialist utopia, a little lefties love. I wonder if it changes... I wonder if going on welfare changes people's voting preferences. It also warns its clients to pay special attention to how companies are disclosing their JobKeeper payments because accounting choices for JobKeeper and other government subsidies vary between entities. Little formal, little formal disclosure was made to help investors ascertain the contributions made to earn, earnings by JobKeeper, the report says. In some instances, the profit and loss impact of a temporary downturn in revenue in March to June, which was the qualifying criteria for JobKeeper 1, was more than offset by the receipt of $19,500 in JobKeeper subsidies per employee until September 2020. I mean, there you go. As restrictions eased across Australia and trading conditions improved, with direct labor uh, subsidies representing a significant one-off tail winter profits, there was no requirement to return the JobKeeper subsidy if sales or profits increased after the recipient had qualified. Why should there be? It's free government money. Don't worry. Don't worry. They'll get it back. The government will get it back. They'll just tax it out of all of us. What do you, what do you think they'll increase first? You reckon they'll increase payroll tax, guys? Or maybe, maybe it'll be GST because the states need more money. Or wait, no, no, they'll just roll out that per kilometer tax to everyone. It'll be if you go for a walk, they'll start taxing your shoes. Or breathing. When can we tax breathing? Just wait. They will. The pe do people not realize this is all the citizens' money? The government doesn't just, even if they do magic money, it's just an IRU token for further forced labor in the future for its citizens. The ATO is still waiting for money to be repaid. The research report also said 15 entities listed on the ASX 300 have announced their intention to return $100, and, uh, $100 million and $100 0.25 million in JobKeeper payments, with a the common theme being that the repayments to the ATO would be net of tax. These repayments account for approximately 4% of all disclosed JobKeeper recipients by ASX 300 entities, it said. Last week, the ATO said 20 companies overall had now promised to repay about 104 million worth of JobKeeper payments, but had only received about 200 million, uh, sorry, 20 million so far. It also said it still owed hundreds of millions of dollars from companies that had attempted to rort the JobKeeper program or were declared ineligible to receive JobKeeper payments in the first place. The program was still worthwhile. Oh, was it? Was it really? Think about it. Have a look at my Odyssey channel and you can see the video discussing the eff efficacy, uh, efficacy, efficacy, how effective the lockdowns were in actually mitigating mortality. This is all a result of that. This is all government interventions. You know, 
people in the past have argued against these type of interventions to mitigate the spreading of disease because of the other consequences that we're seeing now. You have to ask if it's worth it. The program was still worthwhile. At the start of February, Prime Minister Scott Morrison dismissed concerns about companies accepting millions of dollars from taxpayers under the JobKeeper scheme and using some of it to pay executive, executive bonuses and dividends. I'm not into, into the politics of envy, Mr. Morrison said. I mean, that politics of envy, that's pretty much the whole left. That's the whole socialist. Yeah, that's really the basis of it. So many of them are just jealous. Jealous, jealous, jealous. And that combined with the tall boppy syndrome is why I think Australia is even pivoting harder left. Can't blame people, understand it, but really, it's envy. So if there are some companies that feel that they want to hand that money back, great, good for them. But let's not lose sight in some sort of envy narrative that the program did not change the course of a nation. Oh, it did. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Guys, let us know in the comments down below. Thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our video links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.